Hope you're doing well today. Uh, in this video, we'll be looking at uh, making your home a smart home, um, or at least I hope you look look into it more. And how to calculate um, energy use of appliances and and to um, consider what's known as a payback period when you're buying products. Uh, when you're buying things in the home, you all have choices as a consumer to, between different products and they'll give you prices. And along with that is generally an energy use, uh, something like an Energy Star guide that we'll also look into. But um, again, with, with your home, I'm hoping when you design your home um, with some off-grid capabilities and making it energy efficient, that you consider making it a smart home. My own home is semi-smart. There are some aspects that we use, you know, our lights are on, on uh, smart timers and uh, our thermostats on a timer. There's a few other things around here, but we're we're not full fledged off the grid here in in some of the states. Um, but um, here's an example of looking at uh, a smart home, you know, with some different systems. Uh, you have your electricity coming in from utility, but you have some of your own um, solar panels, uh, wind energy in Ohio in this area at least. Um, it's not very good, but there's other devices and, that you can use. And um, some of the things are actually monitored by the power company. They, they really want to be part of your system and, and you need to be careful about that. But um, as I mentioned, let me go on this slide mode here. Um, the smart grid is a little bit of everything. You know, where are we getting our energy from? Not necessarily from Moscow down, down the river. Um, they could be coming from somewhere in North Carolina. It's we're all part of a one big system uh, in this part of the United States, uh, mostly the Midwest, um, connecting all the different energy sources when there's a need. Um, so, like if for some reason Cincinnati is not using a whole lot of electricity, some of the electricity that's generated in Moscow can be shipped somewhere to Indiana or up to Columbus, or possibly there's a nuclear plant up in Toledo that has some extra electricity they, they need to get rid of so they could sell it down to this area. Um, so um, one of the advantages of, of having that smart grid is if the power goes out here in this area because of too much load, we can generate some, we can get some electricity from different areas of the company, of the, of the country. So as, as a home user, this is kind of, you know, make sure that you always have, have power. Um, it, it can be cheaper in a lot of cases because the, the different companies will um, compete for your usage. They have this electricity that, you know, when they run their, their electrical plants, they need to use it. They can't store it. You can't have like big batteries to store excess energy. They've got to either use it or lose it. So it's, it's advantageous for them to sell their electricity as quickly as possible to different consumers. Um, and one of the things you should look at is doing more of a smart appliances, uh, running things around your house so that they use less energy. So like, for instance, my thermostat um, turns down in the evening. It's also um, uh, changes during the day when no one's home. There's no reason to keep, you know, I guess I feel sorry for the cat because the cat might be a little cold in the wintertime when the temperature goes down, but it can't go down too much because then it, um, it, it takes too much energy to bring it back to temperature. So you have to be very careful of that. Same thing with lights. Lights turn on, lights turn off. I have a tendency to leave lights off, on all the time when I'm wandering around. So they just automatically turn off. Um, you also have sensors around the house, possibly. That's not that smart, but it's, it's you know, it's not connected to like your phone or anything. But, um, you know, a lot of times the electrical companies will want to put a smart meter in their own meter in. Some are good. Others, I'm not so crazy about. Um, there are some advantages to this. They'll, they'll give you lower prices to connect one of these things. They can monitor, you know, how you're using your electricity. Um, but um, other th things they have a tendency to do is if there is a high demand, if it's a very, very warm day in Cincinnati, and there's a lot of demand downtown because people run their air conditioners. They'll go out to say, hey, out here in Anderson, we've got some people. We can turn their power down um, to give it to someplace else. Oh, again, I mentioned earlier that power companies do not want to um, build another power plant. It's too expensive. 
payback period is 30 to 50 years and they're not interested in that. They want to try to you know, use the existing system as efficiently as possible. And this is one way to do it. As a consumer, it's a, you know, it's a nice aspect, unless you have someone that, that might be home that day and, whoa, the electricity's turned down. I can't run my air conditioner. It's getting a little warm in the house. Um, you know, that, that's a choice. But by, by doing that, you actually can lower your, your costs. So you'll, you'll save money in the long run. Um, smart appliances are really big today. Um, they, 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 you know, run off your phone. It's kind of nice. I can be at school looking at my phone and, you know, turn different things on and off and check on things. Um, there are, you know, some disadvantages, um, you know, security issues with, with people knocking into Wi-Fi. So you want to make sure that um, you've got um, high-end passwords on everything so no one can get in your house and check out your camera you know, or things like that, or turn, actually connect your thermostat and turn it off. So, you know, be wary of that. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about how electricity is delivered to your homes. Um, just real quick, so you can look at things when you're considering off-grid, what what do you have around your property? Um, so you have the, the generating station in a sense, and it's, it's advantageous to send things at a very, very high voltage so that the current is less. There's this thing called a transformer. Power is basically voltage times current. Uh, current is the amount of electricity that's that's flowing. Voltage is the push. So if I think of, it, uh, of, a, of an analogy, a dam, the height of the dam would be kind of like a voltage. The higher the dam is, the greater the possibility for water to flow quickly. Current is the actual flow of water. Um, the If it's a battery, the amount of storage, the amount of water behind the dam would be kind of like the the battery storage, a AAA battery would be a very, very little storage, whereas a car battery would be a lot of storage. It would be like a big dam. Um, eh. But um, so the power is generated at very high voltages uh, so that they minimize um, energy losses. Um, in physics, you would learn that the, the energy loss is I squared times the resistance. So it varies with the square of the current. So the lower the current, the less energy loss. But you have these different transformers. Eventually, as you get closer to the home, you'll take that 765,000 volts down to 120 and 240 for your homes. Um, and there's different types of, of um, power transformers. So if you're looking at some of the big lines that come out through New Richmond, like if you've ever been golfing at Lindale, you can see some of the big ones. You know, you're looking at 110,000 to 330,000 volts, sometimes 750,000 volts. Um, and then they basically step them down. There's a couple of step down um, uh, power transformer distribution centers. <sighs> um, one is on Mon Mon Carmel, Tabasco, near the McDonald's and Beachmont. Another one is also on um, uh, Summerside. Um, near old state route 74 um so it's just an area it's blocked it's it's, it's fenced off you'll, you'll see things that look like this it's basically dropping down the voltage down to 17 7200 to go towards your homes there's a couple different examples and then then eventually it gets transferred down to um, a can transformer and you might have a single phase or three phase i don't want to talk about the different types of phasing in the wires um for ac but um You'll, you'll, you'll see one of these in, in your homes. These cans will get warm. Basically, they transform. They take a high voltage and drop it down to uh, 240 your house. And then in, inside your house, um, you'll see, like, if you had look at your circuit breaker, generally there's two, two, two sets of lines coming in. And so that um, your um, dryer will probably run off a of 240. Your, your furnace will run off a of 240. You know, the higher voltage would mean less current, more more efficiency. Also, it needs a bigger push for those big appliances. Um, housing circuits, you're going to look at the 120 volts um, to go around. You have like circuit breakers to make sure that you don't have too much electricity going through it. Um, so you have to be be mindful of you know how much electricity you're drawing at any 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 time period. Um, to, for protections, you should have GFI outlets as much as possible. These basically sense any interruptions um, to the electrical circuit and, and just pop a little circuit breaker inside there and you can reset them easy enough. It's a good protection to have, especially in um, 
bathroom areas where you have a lot of water and things like that. Um, so now we start looking at your assignment, um, how to calculate your home energy use. This is a snapshot from the applet that you're going to be using that shows like your, your can transformer from the house, bringing electricity to your home and you're being charged um, by energy usage. And it's just showing um, three different appliances and you can change the appliances and make some comparisons. And, uh, hopefully you'll enjoy that investigation. Um, some terms that you, you should know, you know, energy is the capacity to do work. Normal energy we use in, in, in physics would be a joule. It's a very, very small unit. Um, one newton fall, one, one newton weight object falling for one meter um, increases its energy by one newton meter, which is one joule. And newton is very, very small um, uh, unit of weight. So power is the rate of energy transfer, uh, basically energy divided by time. Some general units, if you take a joule divided by a second, you get a watt. A thousand joules divided by a second would be a kilowatt. Um, electric current is basically coulombs per second. You know, a coulomb is um, 6.25 times 10 to the 18 electrons. So one amp would be 6.25 times 10 to the 18 electrons going through the wire in one second. Voltage again is like a push, sometimes called an EMF or an electromotive force. Um, generally, you've got um, volts, you know, it's kind of weird, voltage volts, kind of nice. Uh, but a volt is basically the amount of energy per coulomb of charge. How much energy could be transferred per a coulomb, which again is number of electrons that can be moved along. And, and a lot of times you like to use the, a dam as, a, as an analogy, where the height of the dam would be like the push, the push for electricity to be able to to be able to flow where the water flowing would be the actual electricity, the electrons flowing. Um, and electrical energy, they don't like to use joule because it's such a small unit. Um, you prefer to use like for kilowatts for power, a thousand watts. And for the time period, uh, you, you take 3,600 seconds or an hour. So you see this unit of kilowatt hour, which is a unit of energy. Very similar to a joule, it's a much, much bigger unit, and it's more convenient to use when you're looking at appliances and so forth. Um, so if you're doing a quick calculation, 1,000 watts, which would be one kilowatt, a one kilowatt device running for 3,600 seconds would use 3.6 million joules. Uh, a one kilowatt device, 1,000 watts is, you know, think of a, a blow dryer, hair dryer, Shh. see for my beautiful hair. Um, some blow dryers are 1,000 or 1,500 watts. So that gives you a, a quick gauge and if, you, you know, if you have a hair dryer lying around. Um, so here I'm going to look at you know, more detail on energy use calculation one more time. So when you click on the fridge and you start running the meter, it'll give you a wattage up at the top. So you have to pay attention to that number. So this 300 watts. <clears throat> Basically, uh, the incoming voltage is 120. I don't want to talk too much about the AC is a varying voltage. So there's a root mean average uh, of the voltage, which is around 120. So that's a, that's a kind of like a fudge number in a sense. But it's changing 60 times per second. So it's changing so fast that it really doesn't matter. It's, 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 it's somewhat smoothed out. Um, so basically the current use would be 300 watts divided by 120 volts or 2.5 amps, which corresponds to 1.6 times 10 to 19 electrons moving back and forth through the circuit. So that's what the AC does. It basically generates energy in a wave. So the electricity kind of just oscillates back and forth. It, it just moves the energy back and forth. So the power company is not, does not um, generate electrons through the wire. It just puts energy into the wires to move the electrons to and fro. And that simulation to and fro basically transfers energy through the circuit. So again, power is energy divided by time. We rearrange that. Um, the energy is going to be power multiplied by, by time. If you use watts and seconds, it, you get joules, very small unit. You prefer to use a kilowatt hour. OK. so. Here's the, the applet we're going to be using. So we run this for one hour continuously. Now, refrigerators don't really run continuously. These are averages. So sometimes it, these are general numbers by just application. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Um, so it uses, you assume 300 watts every hour. And divide that by a thousand to change to kilowatts. So it's 0.3 kilowatts every hour. Energy is power multiplied by time. So essentially when you're looking at the energy use by this refrigerator is 0.3 kilowatt hours. 0.3 kilowatts is the power rating. You use it for one hour. So that's going to be 0.3 kilowatts per kilowatt hours. And you're generally given a cost. In this area, it's about 10, 11 cents per kilowatt hour. Um, and you get a cost of it. You just basically multiply that cost, 10 cents per kilowatt hour, multiplied by the energy usage. So basically, the refrigerator costs 3 cents per hour. Pretty cheap, but that adds up. 3 cents per hour for 10 hours is 30 cents. That over 30 days would be 900 cents. Yeah. And then you add up all your other appliances so, um, and so forth. So it does add up. Um, $250 a year. And you'll see Energy Star ratings where we'll look at some um, um, stickers that they'll put on appliances, Energy Star rating, to give the, the basic cost of using the device. And this is where they get it from. So now if we consider an, an Energy Star fridge, it uses a little bit of less energy, 247 watts. You know, it doesn't seem like much, but it's, it's, a, it's a significant. Okay, so... Um, the Energy Star fridge will save 0.03 kilowatt hours every hour. Again, it's 53 watts less times one hour would be 53 watt hours. Divide that by 1,000 would be basically 0.053 kilowatt hours of energy less than the 300 watt one. Doesn't seem like much. You know, that's, you know, half a dollar per hour. 50 cents per hour. That's that's that that's significant. So that would be 12 cents savings per day, three dollars and sixty cents a month, and forty-three dollars of energy savings per year. Yeah. Now we're talking, you know, some decent amount of money for one simple appliance. But the energy star fridge costs more. You have to maybe cost two hundred dollars more. Maybe it's a little bit less. Sometimes they give um, bargains. Um, the E-Star fridge will save you $43 and, and 20 cents per year. So what you basically do is you take the difference in cost to get the payback period. You know, um, the difference in cost. Where do I start making a profit? You know, a benefit, reap a benefit for buying a um, more efficient refrigerator in terms of money. The difference in cost is basically $200. The energy savings per year is $43. So it'll take about four years and eight months to recoup that extra $200. So you have to make a decision as a consumer, is it worth it? Do I spend $200 now, knowing that in four years and eight months, I will start saving $43 um, per year in energy costs? You know, And then you think about, well, do I keep my, my refrigerator longer than five years? Most people will keep it about 10. So that would be, you know, you'd save $43 per year. After five years, you you basically paid that energy difference off. So over five more years, you would save another $200 for one appliance. So it, it, it's, it's little things that could make a difference. Okay, well, that's it for payback period and um, a little bit of background about smart homes and things like that. Um, I hope you enjoy working with the applet. Um, it's a pretty straightforward one. You know, you'll look at first opening this, this, um, this website um, it should work. It's supposed to be HTML, and you can change the different um, appliances and compare. You can actually, you know, use a solar panel to push push uh, electricity back into the grid if nothing else is being used. Um, and there, you know, there's a time of energy cost. Now, here in Cincinnati, we don't have a, a difference. In some places like California, it actually is cheaper um, energy costs in the evenings because they have such a low de a de demand during the day that they want consumers to try to do more things at night. So they lower the price at night. So some companies will actually run their, 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 their machinery at night to lower equipment costs. And that's something an energy systems engineer pays attention to. Um, the, there is a PDF file that goes along with the website. So you should, you know, read through the PDF file. This is a learning guide. And there's a couple of things in the document that, um, you're going to be filling out as, as you're going along. Um, so please just don't only do what's, what's here. 
I'm really hoping that you know you, you investigate things. These are investigate things with the applet. These are are going to be good things as you as a, a consumer um, should know. Um, all right. Well, that's it for today. I uh, hope this was useful. Uh, thanks and.